Welcome to our F1 2024 driver ratings. We can continue with the next eight races that happen after Monaco. So this is the second third of the season with eight races to go. We're going to rank the drivers, how they did in this eight races period. So GX, um, we're going to do them by, I would say, the least exciting or the least uh, unlikely or not. Like, how, how do I phrase it? Um, well, basically, the what it's the least obvious. Also, well, it's the mo from what is the most obvious to least obvious. I think that should be so fine. Uh, yeah, that's me with interest. <laughs> so bad at this. Okay, okay. Right. <laughs> Okay, uh, quick mention, Logan Sargent is still here because he did seven of the eight, eight races and we will rank him by these seven races with the last nine races being counted for La Franco Colapinto for the final ratings, basically, for the last eight races of the season after Abu Dhabi. So, yeah, um, yeah that's it. And we can get straight into this. Um, Want to start? Oh, <laughs> you can't, obviously. Uh, no one's stopping you. <laughs> yeah, I'm really disappointed to be in this lost the drive, but I can't even. I want really getting like losing the drive. I can't really think of anything else. Uh, last year, or the year before, whenever it was, it was prime time. <laughs> it was last year, yeah. So, yeah, I just can't think of anything else as far as I'm here. I've been in really good moving before now, but it's just been so interesting. Yeah, very harsh, but also on point, in my opinion, as well. Uh, I read really, the sheet, that's for the driver ratings, by the way. Alright, okay. Yeah, you haven't put your zero yet, so <laughs> I was wondering. Okay, since we're starting with Logan Sargent, I'm gonna do mine as well. I'm giving her in 2.5. Uh, a very generous, probably, but he showed a little bit of promise in a couple of races, namely Austria, with probably well, his better weekends. And Silverstone, obviously, was also uh, pretty close to points. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, yeah. <laughs> he was either slow or crashing, and there's just no points from that. I, I think 2.5 is also pretty generous, but uh, improvement over the first eight races, but also got getting, getting dropped because there's no point in like having him there uh, anymore. And they've priced him, so yeah, goodbye, Logan. Unfortunately, it's your time. Yep. Yep, uh, pretty big for you. <laughs> um, I mean, you're, I, I are doing these by by the teams, like from the bottom to the top. Oh, okay. I'm gonna do them then uh, the same as you. My Alex rating is eight point five, and I've he, he he raced quite a bit from the first eight races. I I think these eight races were much tidier and much 
more impressive from him. A uh, couple of points finishes, very good drives, and pretty much not nothing bad really to say, honestly. Uh, it's just Alex putting his average Williams performance in every single weekend. And yeah, um, I think 8.5. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Out of Arcon in the standings. And Magnuson is also on six points, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting, interesting. Uh, yeah, I think they really dropped with the performance of the B, or uh, how they close in Toro Russell as well in Toro Russell. Uh, they really dropped in performance compared to the first eight races. Uh, it's been namely, don't see Yuki in the points that often, but I think Daniel Ricardo actually stepped up uh, compared to the first eight races. Uh, very much on par with Yuki, if not a little bit better right now, but it's still definitely anywhere, not anywhere near the performance. The performance he definitely wants to have. Uh, there are still weekends where he's off the pace, but also weekends where Yuki's off the pace. So it's they're, they're both have been both of them have been very inconsistent, and therefore it's very difficult to rate them high. I'm still having, giving them a much higher score than you because I'm giving Daniel a seven. Uh. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> yep. Yes, it almost feels criminal to give Yuki such a low score, uh, especially if you consider his, his season as a whole. But really, those those first eight races were really shining, but those next eight, unfortunately, not quite. My rating is still much higher than yours, but still not quite where he would want it to be 6.5, so just below Ricardo at this point. Um, Pretty much what I where I see them at the moment. Not 
actual uh, skill hero voice adapted by the performances from people, promptly getting used by their teammates. Joe, uh, who I, I, I like personally, I thought was very good for the first few seasons of his career. He moved blocks off the plate. Uh, and I know that's not a traditional style as well, but Sato can really show off his And still with zero points in the game. So, yeah, it's probably just the opinion that maybe goes into it. Pretty much, pretty much saying what I have to say as well. Uh, nothing is needed to repeat that. Um, my lowest rating so far in these all these driver ratings a one out of ten. Uh, that one being pretty much is better than Mazepin, <laughs> but that's a very low bar to, to overcome. So, uh, yep, yeah. uh, not a zero because. He, he he's not the worst F1 driver ever, but he's not far off at this point. He's just getting destroyed by Bottas every single weekend, especially in qualifying. Like those gaps are ridiculous. Uh, they're they're at the back of the grid. Obviously, he's not gonna get into Q2, but if Bottas is like consistently over half a second faster than you in P19. It's showing that there's there's a problem there. Yeah, he's actually last in the championship. He's <laughs> yeah, in, in Bahrain, the very first race. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much reading my mind there as well. Although my, my ratings seem to be way more generous every single time. I'm giving Bottas an 8. Uh, yeah, I think him being P22 in the standings is definitely 100% due to the car. Like, even at the start of the season when the Sauber actually was in the midfield and could have got a point of two, Bottas was just screwed by the strategy or the pit stop or whatever engine failure like in China there's a lot of bad luck for Bottas but he still has been performing very very well in his very limited uh, machinery that he has and right now um, yeah I think he definitely has been more consistent and better than the both uh, Toro Russo drivers so that's why I'm giving it an 8 Bear in mind, I think that has to do with the switch, you know, bad to the next race, so on. I, I'm not going to put it incredibly high. Um, so, obviously, from the theory, I'm going to say it. So, I'm still going to feel it. I'm still going to dock him a few points, right? Because I don't, I don't think that, I think he is hard to win. Uh, I don't think he's going to win. So, yeah, I think he's struggling in F1. I think, uh, Again, compared to his teammate, who I think, you know, is a really good driver, so uh, I'm going to say that I have four gaps, but I just don't think he's, he's as great, and I'm not letting him be top two guy, top two Italian Grand Prix. Get to me. Um, but also, you know, I love having him in F1 because he calls it pay. Mm, do you actually think, like, uh, if. Baron replaces Magnussen, which is the most likely option for Baku. Do you think it actually would stay in the car? Like, would actually Magnussen not race anymore in F1? Yeah, that's uh, yeah, probably, probably the case. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm more generous 
once again, I'm giving it a 5.5, uh, mainly due to his points finishes. And his Mon Monza performance actually jumped this quite a bit. Okay, he would have it probably a 3.5. Yeah, <laughs> in Monza, it was, it was pretty good. Like, this pilot that has like 10 second penalty probably could, could be too uh, a bit harsh, but uh, yeah, I, I, he's up against Nico Hulkenberg, who is a driver that I don't rate low, and you know, because uh, not quite, not just because he's my favorite driver, but also uh, he's proved time and time again that he's a very good F1 driver. And Magnussen, yep, he's definitely not be on his level, but I think in this final eight, uh, uh, not final eight, but the second part of the season, um, he's been closer to Hulkenberg, and uh, yeah, when Hulkenberg is in the in those people points being positions like in Austria, Magnussen was there as well, not uh, far behind. So yeah, Magnussen had some all right performances to get him some points. No, no standard performances. Those two P six finishes <laughs> in a row, <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Austria and the the Great Britain, uh, Silverstone. Yeah, they were like at the start of those at uh, that eight race period. I also it's been it's been a long time ago as well because of the summer break. So yeah, and they're. I mean, he got a point last race, didn't he? And uh, or, or probably, probably not remembering correctly. Uh, it, it was close. Like he was overtaking another P11, I think, in the end. So, uh, yeah. And in this race, qualified another uh, another Q3 for Haas, and uh, yeah, fortunately was yeah. Uh, Ricardo happened. <laughs> I still don't think he's as he's been as good like you. I, I don't think he's been as good, as consistent, and uh, as much impressive as he was in the start of the season. But still, not many things you can say bad about Hulkenberg. It's pretty much doing what he can with that car, uh, and he also had some great peaks. So giving him an eight point five, so it almost actually had the same rating. <laughs> I'm giving it the same as Albin. I think they're, they're, these eight races were very comparable for both of them. I can. <laughs> Spain? Spain the Netherlands? The Netherlands is alright, isn't it? Uh, yeah, he got qualified by Lando by half a second and finished outside of the podium. Yeah, I could say that. Yeah, valuable driver, actually. 
helping lost out on a very good lineup uh, they could have had uh, with PS3 and maybe Alonso even. Uh, oh. But it's another story. My PS3 rating. Uh, well, I probably you probably don't know since uh, you probably haven't uh, listened to the reaction, my reaction to the Dutch Grand Prix. I gave PS3 the least impressive driver actually. Because, I mean, if Lando wins the race by over 20 seconds and you're outside of the podium getting outqualified by half a second, that's a, that's a Sergio Perez performance, not not a performance of a future world champion. And, uh, yeah, I just had high expectations of Piastri, and I generally thought that it was a really, really bad race for him. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think this, this Monza race was much better for him, but still, I cannot give him... That have a rating. I'm gonna give him an 8.5, which is still like a pretty pretty high up. <laughs> it's 1.5 1. from a 10 rating, but I don't feel like he was as good as people portrayed him. Like obviously very impressive for a uh, for a second season, but and uh, uh yeah the driver with the most points in the last five races or whatever. Still, I, I want to see for more from Oscar. I, I'm just having such high expectations of him that I. I kind of give him a nine because I still had those weekends where he was so far off of, from Lando, especially in qualifying, like any qualifying, like three tenths or even half a second away from Lando Norris. Despite how quick Lando Norris is, I want to see more from Oscar and I want to see better from him. So eight point five is the max I can give him. <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's definitely not that. Just because I think, like, a lot of stuff arrived at the start, but I think otherwise, throughout the races, it's just going to be something that is really you know, and there have been difficult races here. I don't think any of them have really fully blamed him. Right? Belgium? Yeah, I guess. That was completely his fault, that race. Oscar Piastri finished like a couple seconds away from winning yeah. Lewis Hamilton. And he screwed that up. Basically, ruining his entire race like he did for a couple of races. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I agree with most things you said, but I'm just probably way more critical of, of Lando. Like he's not he's not anywhere near a rookie. He's is like he's been here since 2019, which 2019 2020. His sixth season in Formula One. His his first season, to be fair, first season in a in a consistent race winning car, but. I could imagine a Charles Leclerc or a George Russell in that McLaren. I could see them winning way more races, honestly. I just, I just could. Uh, I think Lando has has a so much potential to score way more points, to be way more close in the championship to Max Verstappen. But also, on the other hand, so many great performances from Lando, especially in qualifying, like that that 
that uh, Dutch Grand Prix qualifying lap was just amazing. And uh, he's been there and he's been getting pole positions, even a couple of race wins. Um, well, right, one race win in his eight, eight race period. A lot of podiums. He's sitting, I think he has the most podiums out of any driver at this point. Or maybe he has the same amount as Max. But could be could be the most podiums out of any driver this season after this uh, race in, uh, in Baku. I still cannot give a low rating to a driver that could potentially win a driver's championship this season. I'm giving him an 8, but it's also uh, I'm very conflicted uh, on both ends. I also, I'm very critical of him, but also I want to praise him for his great performances at times. So, yeah, an 8, I think, is, uh, is pretty fair. Below Piastri, because I think I explained that pretty well. I think uh, there, there, you, you should expect more from Lando and uh, when it can take the. But these last eight races, Piastri has actually been more impressive, and I think he maybe even outscored Lando a little bit. Um, so yeah. You a bit of five, not six. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, I think Gasly actually had the pretty underrated couple of races. Uh, and even though he's obviously like Ocon is obviously leading the team, so the team is gonna prioritize Gasly with everything. Uh, I still feel like Gasly has been more impressive than Esteban, and um, mostly giving him an eight point five. Like, they're pretty good races from him, uh, and he couldn't have Dutch done much more in them a lot of the times. I just kind of feel like there are many mistakes or, like, bad moments from Gasly. Like, when Gasly is, is down the order, it's mostly with Ocon as well, even below him. So, I cannot expect Gasly to, like, score points every single weekend because he's an Alpine, but... I, I still feel like he did pretty much maximize uh, this car at most races. And that, that, that Sandboard race was just epic. Like, there was so many overtakes <laughs> in, the, in turn one. Uh, yeah, that was the, yeah, that was the highlight, probably. He, he, he started the season pretty well. Like it, it was beating Gasly in the first eight races, like in qualifying almost every single time. I'm also gonna go back. Ooh, seven. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of fans will agree with you, honestly. Um, so yeah, um, I was I, I I was tempted to give him less than eight, but also like I I, I just couldn't. Like he's getting still getting podiums. He's still getting pole positions. I. Uh, even though he's not perfecting the weekends, he's still showing great speed, and I just couldn't give him a lesson eight. 
Um, for Archon, same reasoning as you. I'm getting in a six. Or maybe it could go lower, but I feel like he's been just a tad bit better in Magnuson for comparison, so I'm gonna give it a six. Carlito. <laughs> yeah. No, phenomenal. Agreed. Um, so uh, it's, it's a difficult one because obviously, what, what are you expecting from him? Are you expecting him to like do a, a challenge to a few drivers? I don't know. I honestly end up giving him a seven, I think. Because of course, I also think, you know, Carlos is a driver out there that makes challenge like Chase, Henry, Mr. Ferrari, and Norris Barty, so it's a little bit younger. Uh, bit less this season, but uh, is seven between the seven and eight for me. I'm gonna go seven. Uh, yeah. Seemingly. You know what? Uh, okay. I almost thought I was thought that we would be very similar in comparison to Norris, but actually we are similar in rating because we are giving an eight as well. Um, very consistent, very much there. Just not quite on the level of Charles Leclerc in uh, uh, in a Ferrari currently. I think I think Charles, yeah, Charles is leaving the team, but still Charles is every single season is showing that he has the higher peaks and the higher end potential than Carlos has. And uh, yeah, Charles, apart from those four, those, that four race period from uh, what was it Canada to I think Great Britain. Like he had like a two DNFs and a P14 or whatever there. Uh, apart from that, he's finished in the top four every single weekend. Apart from those four races, uh, Charles is doing amazingly this this season. And after summer break, podium and a win. I mean, <laughs> that's the best he could, could have done. And honestly, uh, that, that patch was just so sad because you could see that Ferrari just dropped off massively in every single aspect, strategy, uh, decisions, pace, and everything. And uh, I'm, I'm so I'm so happy that they brought us upgrades and uh, won Monza because we have Ferrari finally back in the fight, in, even in, in for the constructors potentially. So yeah, uh, Charles, actually, we actually, you put Charles first, but uh, I was uh, talking about Carlos, sorry. Uh, Carlos, uh, great. But not amazing. Basically, eight is it's pretty solid because Norris had higher lows, but also uh, sorry, uh, higher highs, but also lower lows. So he kind of balances out with Lando in, in comparison. <laughs> yeah, this. I see a solid rating for Charles Leclerc. <laughs> yeah, I, I, even if we think about it, uh, giving a 10 to him, we just feel wrong because still had those four races. Even though I think that was mostly on Ferrari, I still like four races in a row having such a such a bad consecutive weekends that just kind of Give him a nine. I was going to give him a ten because I'm having the same rating for both for our drivers as you. Nine for Leclerc. Maybe a nine point five could be. But I still want to still want to see like I don't know. I, I don't even know what I what I want to see. I just 
I'm just so sad about those four races after after Monaco. Basically, the f first four races of this rating, the the the, the eight, four races after it were amazing. Uh, obviously, um, Hungary, uh, Belgium. Like H Hungary, he was fighting for a for a, I think a P4 or a, maybe on a podium. Uh, like it, it was pretty close to uh, the fight with uh, Lewis and Max at times. Belgium a podium, uh, Netherlands a, another podium. Uh, bear in mind those two races, he was <laughs> definitely not the, the first or second fastest car. <laughs> and then Monza, the first time he got a race winning car, he puts in a great performance and wins the race. I, <laughs> Maybe I'm convincing myself. I'm actually going to give him a 9.5. I think he definitely deserves this. You know what? What's actually stopping me from giving the ten is probably Silverstone because that was the one race he got yeah. uh, legit beaten by Carlos Sainz, like in qualifying and in the race that uh, he had a horrible uh, entire weekend, pretty much because of it. Yeah, but probably if it wasn't for for Silverstone, probably he, he could get ten because yeah, count that was not his fault. Uh, Austria, I mean. He got pretty much sandwiched there at the start, I think. Uh, and what was the other race uh, at, the, at the start? I actually can't remember. Spain, I think. He he got well. He got damaged from Carl Sainz, and because of that, finished behind the uh, a Mercedes, like because of the damage. So uh, again, a great weekend could have been. I think only only one race, the Silverstone race, is. It's uh, basically making a million of time for me. Yeah. Still worse than Alonso. Um, yeah, but still. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, don't, I, I don't think it should, though. I, I, what we expect based on their... Yeah, but... Uh, Lance has been... Lance has been in this in, the, in Formula 1 from 2017. It's 2024. He is in whatever number of seasons he had in Formula 1 and still cannot find consistency, cannot find pace. I mean, he's up against Fernando Alonso, to be fair, but still, like, even against, even against Vettel, he was just, yeah, he could get some performances in, but still, when, when the car was there, Vettel almost won two races in 2021, uh, strolled in the game and got a podium, so, yeah. Um, He got some. He got some head-to-head -head wins, definitely. But still, Fernando is still beating him by quite a lot. And so, uh, yeah, like, good. yeah, it's 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 this eight races and definitely an improvement from uh, from last, but still not at the level of Alonso. Wow! Wow! <laughs> All right. Um, this is actually, I think this is the first one we were giving a higher rating than me. I'm going to 5.5 for Lance, which is also very high for me, but that's the rating I gave for Magnussen as well. I think they're very comparable in that midfield. At the moment, beating by their teammates a little closer in these eight races, but still not at their level. Uh, 
So yeah, pretty much uh, what I think. Also, I think Hokkaido has been better than Alonso uh, compared to our teammates. So that's why I think Stroll's rating is actually uh, very good. That it's next to Magnussen's. I don't think Alonso has been amazing this part of the season. I think for the first half, he was, he was pretty good. Uh, but obviously, I still think he's good. I, I, don't want to, I kind of don't want to give him the seven. Of course, I definitely can't give him seven. So I'm going to give him six. Um, I don't think he's going to be as Okay, I guess we're matching again. <laughs> Six for me and for Lanza as well. Um, yeah, Which, uh, went for the Astons pretty quickly. Uh, I think I said anything else much to say. Prado, uh, all right, it races not not the greatest, not the not the worst. Better than Stroll by a little bit, so that's why I gave it a zero point five rating more. George should have won it and so on. And I think we'll get to that point later on. Right? Well, for purely Lewis alone, you know, as, as like a as race part of the season, deserves to win. Uh, he's a phenomenal racer. So, uh, deserves to win that race. Uh, and then otherwise, I don't, you know, there's no really, really bad races from memory. Uh, Netherlands. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, it it wasn't like a horrible. Yeah. It, there there were no like very bad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have the point fires. <laughs> uh, Spain was, uh, I think they're pretty much on par with George. Yeah, he got, he got, did he get the podium? Yeah, 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 he, uh, Uh, Canada maybe, Canada maybe was, uh, he got fourth, he got beaten by George in both qualifying and the race. So, uh, uh, I mean, George is also very good, though. Uh, <laughs> Still beat his teammate in the race, <laughs> thanks to all the shenanigans. Okay. Yep, yep. Yep. And for me, as well. Uh, second, second highest rated driver so far. Uh, so two victories. Yeah, in retrospect, I think both Mercedes drivers deserve to win that Belgian Grand Prix. When I think about it, um, unfortunately, it didn't quite end as it should with one driver disqualified. But yeah, that's the nature of the sport. It happens, and uh, and yeah, Lewis definitely deserved to win that race, nonetheless. So. Uh, yeah, two, one, two races, got a couple of podiums. Uh, I think closed the gap to Georgia in qualifying a little bit. Right? Like, it, it, Belgium was uh, pretty good in qualifying. Uh, not quite in the Netherlands, but he's still... George is 
amazing still have to take that in consideration uh i think hamilton is just not in his 20, 2018 years that he can just get the lap out of nowhere uh so yeah, i think george is the better qualifying right now that's not there's no doubt about it but lewis still in in the races the management of the entire race he has is still still amazing and still showing at at his age like those two world champions we have next to each other hamilton alonso still showing at their age that they're capable of of being up there uh, at the top level and yeah uh, not quite the perfect 10 because obviously there are some bad patches uh namely losing to george uh in qualifying mostly and uh, netherlands uh even uh when canada wasn't the smoothest race for him i think he could have got a pole position probably if if lewis would have got pole position in canada probably would have had more of a chance to win the race out of george um uh, yeah there are some possibilities he definitely lost out on on the, the more opportunities than george did that's mostly due to his qualifying but yeah the, apart from that great performance uh second highest rated driver as i said uh deserves an eye in my opinion Yep, that's <laughs> he got he got pole position. <laughs> he not just qualified well, he got pole position in front of his home crowd and was Yeah. Uh, that's just, yeah, that's just one race out of the eight that I, I cannot think of a race where he's not being unlucky apart from Austria. I uh, think about it. Even in Netherlands, he pitted once more again for. Yeah. Yeah, even in Italy, that just was just, yeah, that was very, very, very unfortunate. Not that, pew, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, may, no, actually, Qualifying in Hungary, I think, was fully on the team at that point. Like they, they knew how much fuel they had, and they put him out. And yeah, that was another. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna give him. Yeah, I'm gonna give him a <laughs> no way. Yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. All right. Honestly, when I when I thought about these ratings, I just couldn't give him a different rating from Lewis. I think the I I would be, I would I would feel wrong if I would put any any of those two higher than each other. I think uh, George has been very impressive, very unlucky, but also Lewis has been. Also very impressive, and in the races especially, uh, just yeah, those two has performed have performed great. I think whenever the Mercedes got on that level, like they started getting podiums and even race wins, it showed that they have such a great dry lineup. And yeah, they they both the time they got the got good car, they both performed so well and got a uh, well. Should have gotten a couple of wins each, but yeah. Um, so, like, they shouldn't have been 
where they've been. They've taken wins off from McLaren's mainly. Um, and they just have the beta uh, driver lineup. Honestly, when you, when you compare the driver linings of McLaren's and Mercedes, he, that makes sense. Simply makes sense because the Mercedes driver lineup is the better one. Takes wins from the McLaren driver lineup and it just shows uh, in the ratings as well. For you as well, it's pretty much the same story. Like Both of your Mercedes drivers have one higher rating than McLaren's. Uh, two two races two maybe three races <laughs> oh actually generous probably oh No. Honestly, despite him having okay last few races, like Belgium qualified second of well, uh, sort of like third, sorry, uh, started in second, finished in P8, got the P7 thanks to his qualification. Uh, yeah, qualifying okay, still got destroyed by Max Verstappen, and in the race just fell behind everyone uh, from the top teams. Uh, Netherlands start okay, like uh, qualifying wasn't anything special uh, in the race. Uh, yeah, pretty much the same story. You know, well, I was thinking that Carl signs in the end, uh, just not a great performance uh, when you think about it. And Italy was probably his best race, but also still he got, he got beaten considerably by in both sessions. Uh, I just don't think those three races get his rating up because of what would happen in the first five of these eight races we're rating. Like, when you think about it. Okay, Canada, horrible. <laughs> Austria, like, bad. Uh, the Silverstone, horrible. It's <laughs> so many, so many races where he's just been nowhere, getting no points, getting out in Q1, Q2, or whatever. I just, this not, not, just not deserving of a rating anywhere higher. Like, I I'm giving it a higher rating than Guanyu Show because Guanyu Show is literally invisible, doesn't exist. But Sergio Perez 1.5, I, I just cannot. It, those, those three races don't save the rating. He's been awful, this, the, you know, patch after Monaco. Even in Monaco was horrible because he got qualified. Oh, sorry, uh, he got out in Q1 and then just crashed with Magnussen because that's what did you get with, with while starting starting next to Magnussen. That's your fault in qualifying like that. And ever since Monaco, yeah. Horrible, horrible. Started to uh, but I'm 
Couldn't have said it better, honestly. Like his only bad weekend was arguably Hungary, where he just yeah he made a mistake in qualifying in the race was just didn't didn't just end up very uh ending up very good. Uh, but obviously the the crash and the all the things that happened, even the turn one where he got to the escape road and had to see the position to land though. Um, yeah, just apart from that, pretty much always maximizing the points. Uh, now he's had having a, a race winning car, and maybe even not even not even a podium, uh, capable car. Um, as we saw in Monza, yep, yeah, he's just he's just always there, and I think it's it's very much comparable to the Mercedes uh, drivers, like in terms of. Performance like, yeah, Max and Mercedes drivers like yeah, I, I they're actually getting the same rating because I think they deserve it. All three, pretty much on the on par with the impressiveness in my opinion or uh, their performance. All right. All right. Oh. Okay, um, our top five drivers by these ratings are Charles Leclerc first, and it's a tie between Hamilton and Max, so the three multiple race winners uh, in this in this period. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah right. Uh, but yeah, he, he, his rating is a bit lower. <laughs> uh, then behind them, Russell, 8.5, and then PS3 Hulkenberg tied for fifth place, so I think this makes a lot of sense. Like we 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 did pretty well in these ratings. I mean, in my opinion, I think they work pretty well. Yeah, we did that. Um, <laughs> well, go you show me zero point five. Oh my god. Yeah. I, now that I think about it, I could have given it a zero. It would be funny to see a zero rating. <laughs> but yeah, uh, there's just uh, zero rating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did pretty well on this one. Uh, I'm pretty happy. I, I actually don't remember most of the the ratings we did for the first eight races, so I, I think we're gonna have the same problem after Abu Dhabi where we're rating the final eight races. So, so yep, yep, uh, it's gonna be very exciting to see it. Actually, I, I would give. A separate maybe in the, I don't know if we should have a separate video for uh, for the combined ratings because uh, yeah Yeah, perfect. Per perfect idea. Yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we're done. <laughs> Recording for uh, quite a long time this uh, today, but I think it's been worth it. Um, and yeah, uh, I think. Wait. Uh, yeah, the next video you're gonna see is probably gonna be without me as the host. It's gonna be HX alone. Uh, uh, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> I, I, I honestly, I, you did pretty well last time, but I, I personally really not not. A, I don't enjoy doing the podcast by myself. I just I just don't feel like it, it's it's the it's it basically. I, I don't feel like it's uh 
it's fun enough. I, I don't know. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, thanks everyone for watching the ratings. We gave drivers for these second half of the season, or uh, sorry, second third of the season. Because it's exactly split into three thirds, and we're the second term of it. Yep. Uh, finally, the races in front of us. Um, I'm exciting to see them. So uh, yeah, stick with us, and we'll see you next time. See ya. Bye. <laughs>